This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad, 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 surely glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Aren't you glad this morning to be in the house of the Lord to worship his holy name? As the word says, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Welcome to the new life in Christ Jesus Church where Jesus is glorified. We welcome you this Thanksgiving season on this fourth Sunday in November where Pastor Larry Burgess is the host pastor and the senior pastor of the ministry and we just want to give you glory and give God glory for who he is and what he's already done in our lives. We thank him for all that he's going to do and yet willing to do. And we just say thank you to God for all that he has done. The fact that he's already paid the price and that yet he's obtained everything that we need, but it's us to us to reach out and grab if we really want it. How bad do we want what he's already paid the price for? How big is your faith? How bad do you want what God has for you? Let us bow. Father of God, we come thanking you right now for this day. We come standing in agreement, Lord God, coming against all principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places that will try to hinder the word from going forth. We come, Lord God, thanking you for the anointing that is upon the pastor's life, Lord God. And we thank you for the anointing that as the word goes forth, that it will reach deaf ears in the name of Jesus, that it would open deaf ears, that it would reach broken hearts and mend them in the name of Jesus, that it would touch lost souls in the name of Jesus, that they will be saved. And then, Father, we decree and declare that souls will be saved, lives will be changed, hearts and lives will be mended in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory for what you're going to do this day. And we thank you right now that, devil, you cannot stop God's ultimate purpose in the land. And that, devil, you cannot stop the message from going across the airways and the byways and even on the radio. So we welcome you all that are here in the sanctuary and those that are viewing by airways and on the radio. We thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We want to welcome Pastor Burgess as he come forward right now and carry on with the service. Let us give God a hand as he comes forward. Amen. Go ahead. I'm going to hold it. Praise the Lord. Glory. How you all doing today? Well, we have some I guess for you that don't know them, you would call them visitors, but they're not visitors. Matter of fact, they've been with us a long time. Amen. You used to be my, my piano player. He started truck driving, couldn't, couldn't make it back. But I still love him. Him and his wonderful family. Amen. Well, I'm gonna let the kids come today. Y'all have some scriptures you want to share today? 
I'm going to let y'all share a scripture. Go ahead, on. Y'all share y'all scripture. Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of these things. Philippians 4, 4, 3. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Glory. Over in our fortune, said the walk into the sparrow. I should really like to know why these ancient human beings rush about and worry so, said the sparrow to the water. Friends, I think it must be that they don't have any heavenly father such as care for you and me. Amen. Philippians 2, 4 through 11. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, that are not memory to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow both things in heaven and things in earth and things are to the earth, and that every tongue should confess to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, 4 through 11. Amen. 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 Wow. That's good. Y'all give them a hand. Yeah, there you go. Amen. Glory to God. These kids are growing up, and they're learning the scripture. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. But what scripture do you know, Miss Alona? <laughs> <laughs> What scripture do you know, sir? I know, but I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, anyway. Uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. We've been teaching on healing for, for how long now? About six weeks now? Teaching on healing. And there have been people being healed, people being delivered. And we have a testimony that came in today. This dear sister was healed of cancer. Sister, would you like to come to give your testimony? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Amen. Because, see, God is the healer. Amen. God is the healer. And you came, God touched you, and you come back today, and you told me that God has healed you of cancer. Yes, sir. Amen. So I'd like you to share that with the people. Amen. If you don't mind. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Marilyn Alex, and um, Pastor Larry knew I had cancer, and he came to pray to my house to pray, and just he really in my family that the Lord removed the cancer. So I went to the doctor last month, and I talked to my medical doctor, and he said that. Uh, there was no cancer in my body, but I still have to take the pills. You forgot to take the pills? I still have to take the pills. Oh, okay. Oh. Like, there's no uh, that, cancer cells or anything. In it's body. all gone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, that's a, that, that's a testimony. Amen. You see, the goodness of the Lord, it doesn't matter who you are. It, you're, and let me tell you something, folks. You always say, well, I'm too young. I'm too old. You're never too young or you're never too old yes. for God to touch you. Yes. God's miracle working power is available. Amen. Amen. Last month, she had cancer. Today, she don't have cancer. Yes. Now, tell me, do we serve a good God? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you very much for that testimony. Amen. Yes. See, you guys don't understand. Yes. Uh, when we come here, to, when we do, when we're doing these, these, these messages on healing, my faith is on the line because I'm expecting for people to be healed. And we have, you now my wife came here the other Sunday and I didn't even know that she was hurting. Amen. Didn't even know she was hurting. And, uh, what? Oh. Who? Oh, she hurt her shoulder. Who she want? Oh, my wife? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking about that time. 
I'm talking about this, uh, since we've been teaching on healing. She come in, she just came home from Israel. And her leg, I mean, she had did something to her leg. Her leg was in so much pain, I didn't even know about it. Her knee was in so much pain, I didn't even know about it. But then, would you like to come and share your testimony? Yes, come on, you share your testimony. Amen. Because I didn't even know, I didn't even know she was hurting. But God touched her body. Amen. I wish Andrew was here, if he could give his testimony. Hallelujah. Wow. God is so good. It's just, he is very, very faithful. And, um, and the scripture says that we overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb and with the word of our testimony. So we're not ashamed to testify of the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, anyway, as Pastor says, I came from Israel and, um, just because of the walking or some kind of, I don't know what happened to my knee, I just really have a difficult to walk, I mean even see it, even uh, my mother was moving and um, go to the second floor for me was an extremely pain. And so, and I was believing, staying in the word and speaking the word, receive my healing, but symptoms were still there. So, and as pastor's teaching, um, you know, sometimes he don't share his symptoms because he just say in the word to believe God. And I said, well, you know what? I'm not going to say nothing to him because I'm just going to believe God. <laughs> so, um, and uh, we have that service and um, I think this was a Tuesday or Sunday. But anyway, I have this service and I was just in so much pain and I was like hardly even see it in the service. You know, and the, the symptoms was really, really severe. And so, and he said, after the service, he said, well, if someone have a prayer request, come and um, I will pray for you. Well, I have a prayer request and I just came to the front and um, I didn't say what to pray. I just, and you start to pray for me for, for the healing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And I didn't feel anything at that time. I mean, I still have the symptoms. Well. But in the morning, see, sometimes God can heal right away. But when I wake up in the morning, next morning, I was symptom free. And I said, Oh my Jesus, no pain at all. I mean, I can jump, I can run, I can go any stairs. Amen. I mean, I mean, that's so awesome. God is faithful. And I just praise God and thank you, Pastor, for your faithfulness, for your word. Because when you teach the word, you know, God will have to confirm the word. That's right. He and does. He confirmed the word in our lives. So we just thank God. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you, dear. Amen. I want you to, I just want to, you to, to know and understand, amen, that God is a healing God. I remember uh, a year ago, we was uh, about a year and a half ago, we was teaching on healing. And my dear sister right here, she was at home. She was listening to it on the internet. And God touched her body while she was at home. Listen to it. Am I right? Amen. God touched her body while she was at home. And God healed her body. Amen. See, God, he loves his people. And he wants to see us all healed and delivered. I remember this brother right here, he was, when he first started driving the truck, he was driving the truck and his head started hurting so bad. <laughs> and he remembered my teaching. He remembered my teaching about you can lay hands on yourself and, 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 and declare the word of God and God will heal you. Amen. Well, he, he, he had this big migraine headache and he laid hands on his head. He said, I don't receive you. I come in you get off me. <laughs> and that headache left him. Amen. And he called me. He, he was just shouting full of joy on how God healed him. Amen. You see, we believe that when we minister along this line, that God hears us and that God honors his word. Otherwise, why would we continue teaching along this line? Amen. If we had no faith in God, that God will honor his word. That's why we do this, because we do have faith that God will honor his word. And I believe that you that are listening today, you that are with us by the internet, and all of you that are in the service today, I mean, I believe that, that uh, it's not an accident that you're here. Amen. If you believe in God for a miracle, if you believe in God for a touch in your body, 
today, I want you to extend your faith, release your faith, and make this declaration. Today, I will receive my healing. Amen. And you that are listening by the internet, make this declaration today. I will receive my healing. Amen. Because see, who who gonna give it to you? God. He's already paid the price for it. Jesus has already paid the price for your healing. And all you got to do is receive what God has already done for you. Amen. Receive it. Amen. It's nothing that you have to do to earn it. It's already been paid for. It's already been paid for. Amen. And God is going to do something so significant in your life to show himself strong on your behalf. So folks, today as we minister, I want you to once again release your faith. I want you once again to release your faith. Now, before I get to, before I start ministering, I want to share this. Today is the 27th, and there's three more days in this month. The 28th, 29th, and the 30th are the last three days of this month. We're going to be fasting and praying the last three days of this month. We're not fasting 24 hours. We're only fasting 12 hours. That's from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. for three days. Amen. Now, we're going to be praying the three times, three times a day prayer, like Daniel prayed. We're going to pray at 9 in the morning, 12 at noon, and 3 in the evening. Amen. The way Daniel prayed. And we're going to believe God as 9 in the morning. We're going to be praying for Jerusalem. You know, they have a lot going on over there now. The fires and everything. The arsonists is going on over there. People are setting fires. We're going to be praying for Israel and Jerusalem. We're going to be praying for the prime minister, for, his, for God's protection over them, amen, and his family. We're going to be praying for the military personnel that they will find these arsonists and, and, and bring them into custody, amen. And we're going to pray also for uh, uh, their families, amen, the families of Israel, God's people, amen. They're God's people. They were God's people before you were God's people, amen. And so we're going to be praying for them. And then at 12 noon, we're going to be praying for the body of Christ. We're going to be praying for the fivefold ministries. Amen. Their families. We're going to be praying for our families, our lost loved ones, and for those that needed salvation. We're going to be praying for the, the, the church at 12 noon. Amen. For all those that are in spiritual authority. Then at 3 p.m., we're going to be praying for our president, the elect president. We're going to be praying for him. Because, see, God is going to use this man in a very powerful way. <clears throat> and we are, we, we are to be praying the will of God over his life and over his family life. Amen. And over his presidency. And we're going to ask God to do what he said that he would do. See, I believe that God is about to show up and show himself strong on the behalf of America right now. And we as a body of Christ have been called to pray. <clears throat> now prayer is not just for here in America. God is calling for prayer worldwide. Na national and international prayer. Amen. So it's time for the body of Christ to pray. Amen. So we're going to be fasting when? Thursday, Friday, that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Now, Thursday and Friday is our regular days of prayer. Thursdays and Fridays are our regular days of prayer. And so I'm going to fast <coughs> five days instead of three days. Because Thursday and Friday are my days of, of prayer that we pray regular at 9 in the morning, 12 noon, and 3 in the evening. And so instead of me praying just Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday we're fasting and praying. I'm going to pray Thursday and Friday also with fasting and praying. Now, you're welcome to join me in fasting and praying for those three days, for those five days if you want to, but you are obligated for the last three days of the month. Everyone that's a part of this prayer team, you are obligated for the last three days of this month. The, the 28th, 29th, and the 30th. Amen. You're obligated for those three days. Amen. For all prayer words. All prayer words. This is your obligation. Amen. And then if you want to go that extra two days with me, 
Thursday and Friday, you're welcome to do so. We will appreciate that. Amen. <clears throat> and I believe that those of you that need healing during that time, you be faithful to these prayers. You will see the hand of God manifesting in your life. Amen. Now, I want to take you to the Word. How many believe God for healing today? Amen. You need a healing in your body? You do too? Who else? Anybody? You need a healing in your body too? Amen. Now, I'm going to come in agreement with you right now. I'm, co I'm coming in agreement with you right now. That today, you will receive your healing. Amen. I'm coming in, I'm setting myself in agreement with you right now. And I want you all that believe in God for healing to make this statement with me. I let just everyone, let all of us make this statement. Today, say it with me, today, I will receive my healing. And I thank God for the word today. Amen. Now just release your faith with me and stay in faith with me throughout today. Because by 2.30, I'm expecting for you to say, God has touched me and I'm healed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I want you to open your Bible with me. I want to first go to uh, the book of, let's see, let's go to the book. Let me see here. This is Here we go. I want you to go into the book of Luke. <clears throat> book of Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. Hallelujah. I need, oh here we go. Luke chapter 5. And I want to, let's go down, let's read uh, verse number, let's start with verse number 12. Luke chapter 5, verse number 12. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain place, in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Amen. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Well, we know that it is God's will for us to be clean of whatever sickness and disease that we are experiencing in our body. Why do I know that it's God's will? How many of you think that it's God's will for you to stay sick? Amen. How many of you believe that it's God's will for you to continue walking around with sickness in your body and you think that it's glorifying God? It does not glorify God for his children to be sick. Amen. God does not walk around heaven full of sores and full of sicknesses and diseases. And so you are caught up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Therefore, God does not want to see any sickness in your body as you've been caught up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now notice what he said, far above principalities and powers and mighty dominion. So when God exalted you, when God raised you up, when God bring you to a place of, 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 when he exalts you into his presence, in his presence there's healing. In his presence there's peace. Amen. Now notice in this lesson that we're about to discuss that publicans and sinners from, 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 from all around came to this place where Jesus was teaching in Philip's house, in Paul's house, whoever house he was in, amen, and the presence of God was there to heal them all. <clears throat> the presence of God was there to heal them all, but not all received their healing. Let's read just a little bit for verse number, verse number, uh, uh, verse number 14 said, and he, and he charged him saying, that is verse number 13, and he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. His, his leprosy was from, 
he loves he departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go to but go show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto him, unto them. Amen. Now notice right here in verse number. Let's go down to verse number 16. <clears throat> verse number 16. And it says, And he withdrew himself into a wilderness and prayed. Now Jesus went, <coughs> Jesus, he always, he always uh, draw apart from, from people because, see, he cannot allow himself to be caught up he has to separate himself so that when God wants to use him, that he will be refreshed, that he will be strong, that he will be able to do the ministry that God had placed upon his heart. Amen. And so what he, what he does, before he, every time you see, before Jesus do any kind of ministry, or ministry to the sick, he always withdraw himself. Amen. To an isolated place where it's just him and God. And as he prays and as he seeks the face of God and as he ministers to God, God ministers back to him. And so now God has given him the ability to release his will in the earth. What was his will? His will was to destroy the works of the devil. For this is the purpose that the Son of God was manifest, to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. To heal the sick, to cleanse the levels, to raise the dead, and to cast out devils. And he said, freely as you receive it, freely give it. So we see here that in <clears throat> verse number 17, and it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching that there was Philistines that there were uh, Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power, now notice what he said, because this is very important. And he said, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now notice he said, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Amen. Now notice that they were all come out from all the cities to hear this man to preach and to declare to them the word of God and the will of God. But notice what he says right here. Let me get this right here. <clears throat> but notice what he says right here in verse number 17. And he says again, I'm going to read it again from the beginning. And it, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees, doc, there were Pharisees, Doctors of the law sitting, sitting by, which were come out of every town. Knows where they was coming from? They wasn't just local people. These people coming from distance to hear this man. Amen. They was coming from distance to hear this man. They were coming from every town. Amen. From every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And then verse 18, And behold, men brought in a, a bed, a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And they, he said, when they could not find by which way, by what way they might bring him in, because of the multitude, they went up, up they went upon the housetop. Now see, these are people was determined to, re, to, to, to see the, the will of God carried out in the earth, or in the life of that man. Amen. They was willing to be ridiculed by their actions. Amen. Notice what he says right here, verse number 20, verse number 20, and when he saw their faith, you see, it's not, it's, it's not, what they did that caused the man to be healed, that caused the man to receive, amen, because the presence of the Lord was there to heal them all. The presence of the Lord was there to heal them all, but not all received healing. Not all received healing. 
Amen. But notice who received healing. Notice, notice what he says right here in verse number, verse number 21. And the scribes and the, and the Pharisees began, began to reason, saying, but who, who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? Amen. You see, people want what God has for them, but they want it their way. Remember we talked about on the other day, uh, Naaman, uh, uh, the, the, the captain of the host, amen, and uh, how he came to, how he was sent to, to, be, to, to be healed, amen, and then Elisha did not come out to, to, to speak a word over the, the, the captain of the host. He did not come out to lay his, to wave his hand over him or to or to call upon his God for this captain of the host. And the man got mad. He said, at least he could come out and greet me and, and wave his hand and speak to his God concerning me. Amen. But the man, he got mad because it did come the way that he thought it should have happened. See, so many times we have our preconceived ideas on how God is going to heal us. And when we come to God in this way, if God's thoughts are much higher than our thoughts and His ways is higher than our ways, we cannot put God in a box and expect God to heal us the way we think we ought to be healed. Amen? God has given us instructions in His Word. And one of the main things that I understand about what God said in His Word, He, he tells us to do what? To meditate upon his word. To meditate. He said, let this book of the law not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them. Amen. And health to all your flesh. So when we meditate upon the word of God, we don't have no right to tell God, I want my human to come this way. I don't want to go to the Jordan River. That's the most dirty water in town. There's many other waters right here that's much cleaner than the Jordan River. Why should I have to go down to the Jordan River when there's, these rivers are much cleaner? See, we want it our way when God is giving you instruction, and this is one of the, the, one of the most places that people find it difficult to honor God. To honor God, it means that we have to Follow his instructions. And his instructions sometimes are not logical. <laughs> his instructions sometimes is not, it's not something that we uh, just find a delight in obeying. Because sometimes his instructions seem like they are unrealistic. And the majority of the time they are. <laughs> and the majority of the time they are. That, you know, because see, we don't understand how God thinks unless we understand what the Word of God says. And this is why it's so important that we meditate upon the Word so we can have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God. Amen? It's the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God that when we study the Word of God, it's going to cause the Word to come alive. The Word is going to take upon flesh. And that when the word begins to take upon flesh, that word that takes upon flesh is going to begin to minister life to the whole body. To the whole body. Amen. God wants to see you healed. He wants to see you delivered. So he tells us right here in verse number, in verse number, in verse number 21 again, he said, and the strap. Let me, let, let's go back to verse number, verse number 20. Verse number 20. And when he saw their faith, who faith did he see? He saw those men that brought this man up on the top of the house and let him down in, into the room where he was sitting, where there was uh, doctors, Pharisees and doctors of the law from Jerusalem, Judea, amen, from all over. They was all there in the house. Now, who was in the house? All these dignitaries. People that was well advanced in scripture and knowledge. Who was not in the house? The one that has a real need in his life. Now notice, some of those in the house probably had a need in their life. And what the scripture said, 
the presence of the Lord was there to do what? To heal them all. But they did not allow the word of God to minister to them. Instead, they come against the teacher. They came against the teacher. Now, who's the teacher? Jesus Christ. Amen. They came against the teacher. Now, notice what he did. Notice what he did. Now, this, is what they, this is how they came against the teacher, verse number 21. And the scribes of the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? They call his words blasphemy. Amen. Who is this that speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their, th their thoughts, he answered and he answered said unto them, Why reason, What reason ye in your hearts? Well, it is easy to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power upon earth to forgive sin, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Rise up and take up thy couch and go into thine house. God's way is always higher than our ways. And when we try to give God, try to put God in a box, and we're saying, God, unless you do it this way, I won't receive it. And you know what? You won't receive it because he's not going to do it your way. So you're going to have to release your faith. You're going to have to believe God. See, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so that faith cometh by hearing and hear it by the word of God. Amen. And then he says in verse number 11, that verse number, uh, chapter 11, verse number 6, he said, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is a what? A rewarder. Well, what is the reward for one that is sick? The reward for one that is sick, that God deliver you from that sickness and from that disease. That is your reward, folks. Amen. That God delivers you. Amen. So, so we have to we got to believe that He is who He said He is. That He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. Glory to God. And so we know that God does not get pleasure out of seeing us sick. So we need to release our faith. Well, I don't know if I got faith no more. You know, I've been dealing with this sickness for so long, and I don't even know if my faith even exists anymore. Well, then you need to go back with me to the book of Daniel, the book of Mark, I mean, chapter 11. There's a famous passage of scripture here that was, uh, I mean, that, that really sparked the faith in a, a mighty man of God who has now gone to be, go home and be with the Lord. Amen. But it raised him up off his bed of affliction before, while he was a, when he was a child. Amen. It raised him up on his bed of affliction. Now notice what he said right here in verse number, uh, uh, chapter 11. Let's look at verse number, uh, let's start out with verse number 12. Amen. Verse number 12. And then it says, now because see now I'm going to help your faith, I'm going to help your faith right now to be established. He said right here in verse number 12, he said, and on the morrow when they will come from Bethany, he was hungry, talking about Jesus. And seeing the fig tree of far off having leaf, he came as happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Amen? Was not yet. Now, we see that Jesus came to a fig tree, and uh, he, he was hungry, he came to a fig tree, he was on his way to, he was on his way into uh, Jerusalem, where he was to minister the word of God. Amen? Now, notice what he said here in verse number 14. This is Mark chapter 11, verse number 14. And when and Jesus answered and said unto it. Now, Jesus is now speaking to a tree. He's now speaking to a tree. What is he doing? He is releasing God's ability through words. He is releasing God's ability through words. Now, you being a child of God, a Christian, amen, you have the ability to release God's ability through your words. But first, you got to believe your words. Because if you don't believe your words, then your faith 
is not going to be it's not going to be productive because your faith hinges on what comes out of your heart, what comes out of your mouth. Amen. Your faith is formed by the words that come out of your mouth. Amen. And the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that we are snared with our own words. We are brought into bondage with our own words. And so if my words is not lined up with the word of God, then I am not being a blessing to myself. I'm being a hindrance. I'm hindering myself from receiving what God has for me to receive. Because it's not going to happen unless my words become full of life. And my words, if they're not full of life, then they are not going to produce health and healing in my body. Hallelujah. Do y'all follow me thus far? Amen. Because God's word is life and health and healing to all our flesh, folks. And when we understand that, we can, it, it wouldn't be no problem for us to speak to our bodies. Because see, I used to be very sick. And, and, when, and when I learned what I'm sharing with you, when I learned what I'm sharing with you, it just like, it made the difference just like between day and night. I was sick one day and the next day, I am so in divine health. No pain whatsoever in my body. Why? Because I realized the power that the words had in me when I released them in faith, speaking and declaring what God has said, that God, he confirmed his word with signs following. And because God confirmed his word, folks, today I'm walking in divine health. Amen. I'm walking in divine health. Amen. And every time sickness tries to come upon my body, I don't just sit there and say, oh, it looks like I'm getting a cold. Or it may be the flu. I don't know what it is, but it's making me sneeze. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't talk like that. Amen. You know what I do? I say, devil, you, you invading God's property. I have not violated the natural law. I have not walked around outdoors with my shoes off. I have not walked around outdoors bareback in this cold weather. You have no reason to touch my body. Now I speak to these germs that are trying to rest upon me. I command you to get off me now in Jesus' name. And you know what? And then I begin to praise God. Next thing you know, those symptoms that try to come upon me, they're no more, they're no more attacking my body. Why? Because I learned to fight for my health. I learned to fight for my health. See, once God heals you, you know that God does not get pleasure out of seeing you sick. So why would you allow sickness to come back on your body again? I used to have a, it's just like scales was coming on my leg at one point. And this was just a few months ago. A few months ago, it was some scales developing over on my leg. And I took that anointed oil. Amen. And I, I never told my wife about this. She, this is the first time she ever heard about it. Amen. And it was painful. Very painful. And I took that anointing off and I started putting all on this thing every day. And I started saying, in the name of Jesus' skin, I command you to turn it normal. You are healed in Jesus' name. I was speaking to my leg every day. Every day. Amen. And you know what? That what was on my leg is gone. My leg don't have no scales on it no more. Amen. It was right in here. It was right in here. There's no scales on my leg no more. My leg is healed. You know why? I took authority over my health through the word of God. Amen. God will not confirm my theory, but he will confirm his word. He bore my sicknesses. He carried my diseases. And by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. And so you can receive your healing. You are in a right, you're in a good place right now to receive your healing. Now notice what he said right here in verse number uh, uh, verse number 14. And Jesus answered and said unto it, talking to the tree, no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever, and his disciples heard it. What was Jesus doing speaking to a tree? He was not trying to uh, uh, humiliate himself by speaking to this tree. My, is, uh, on the contrary, he was causing the people to see the power that words have. Amen. He was showing them the power of words. Because see, it was words that created the atmosphere. It was words that created the, the universe. It was words that created the clouds. It was words that created the, the, the trees of the land. It was words that created you. Amen. 
And God said, let us make man in our image after our life. It was word that created you. And that's how powerful words are. God used the word to create the whole uh, uh, space and atmosphere, the stars and the moon and the sun and, and everything, and the oceans and everything that you see. That's how powerful words are, folks. And when we understand that, we can speak God's word over our health. And God will confirm his word. And that he tells us in, in Hebrew chapter uh, 11, uh, Hebrew chapter 13, verse uh, 8, I think. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, God don't change. He tells us in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. Amen. And he tells us in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 13, he said, he hastened to perform his word. He hastened to perform his word. Amen. And he tells us in Mark chapter 16 and verse 20, and the Lord went with them, working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Confirm the word with signs following. So God wants you to speak his word. He wants you to speak his word. See, what happens when we don't speak his word, that we are selling for what the devil trying to place upon us. We are saying, okay, devil, you want me to receive that? Oh, no problem. I'll just close my mind. I'll not even talk to God about it until it becomes unbearable. Then I'll say something. But now it's about too late because you can gain the devil a foothold in your health. Amen? When the symptoms first begin to come, that's the time to start speaking. That's the time to start speaking over your body when the symptoms begin to come. Amen? Glory to God. Amen. And so we see right here in verse number, verse number 22, it said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. When Jesus spoke to this tree, he was, he was trying to help the people to understand that if you're going to receive anything from God, if you're, going to, if, if you're going to accomplish anything for God, then you're going to have to understand what faith is all about and how it operates. Faith operates through words, folks. It doesn't operate on how you feel. It doesn't operate on how much pain you're going through. Faith does not operate on how people are speaking nicely concerning you. Faith operates from the words that you speak from your heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Amen. When I speak the word of God over your life, I'm not speaking the word of God over your life to see how you're going to respond. I'm speaking the word of God over your life in faith that you will join me in faith and receive your miracle. Because your miracle is not dependent on me. Because as a man believing in his heart, so be it. Your miracle is not dependent on me. Your miracle is dependent on your belief. Your miracle is dependent on how you believe the word of God, how you hear the word of God, and how you receive the word of God. Because you see, I'm not God. I'm his voice. I'm not an echo. I'm his voice. And as I declare the word of God concerning divine health and healing, let me tell you something. You should have no problem receiving your healing. Notice what he said right here, verse number 22 again, Mark chapter 11, verse number 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, and he's talking to us, and he said, have faith in God. Verse number 23, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say. See, your words have to come in line with God's word. So, Instead of you talking about, oh, I'm so sick, I'm in so much pain, you need to be declaring that Jesus bore my sickness and he carried my diseases. When he's talking about, when he said he carried your diseases, he carried your pain, folks. He carried your pain. He carried your infirmity, your sickness, and your diseases. There's nothing about you that God has not already paid the price for. Amen? Regardless of what you're experiencing, the price has already been paid. Glory to God. Amen. Jesus bore your sickness and he carried your diseases and by his stripes you are healed. You are healed. Isaiah chapter 53. 
verse 4 and 5. Amen. So right here in verse number, in Mark chapter 11, verse number 23, he said, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, or what is the mountain that you need to speak to in your life? You have, what is the mountain that's in your life that you need to speak to? Is it sickness? Is it some kind of disease? Is it some kind of infirmity that the devil has placed upon you? Then you need to, you need to, you need to be encouraged right now. You need to be encouraged right now, and you need to declare over your body what God has said concerning you. What did God say about you? He said, He bore your sicknesses and He carried your diseases, and by His strife you are healed. That's what God says about you. But what do you say about you? Oh, I'm in so much pain. I can't, I, I don't know if I can get up today. I, I, I'm going to lay down all day long. I'm just going to be lazy. Oh, woe is me. I'm so undone. I'm so unworthy. <laughs> Amen. You gotta watch what you're speaking over your life because what you're gonna speak over your life, your it's gonna take a, it's gonna it's gonna have an effect in the spiritual realm. Your words gonna have a powerful effect in the spiritual realm because you are a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being created in the image of God, and your words are full of life, are death. Your words are full of life, are death. Amen. You can speak life. Or you can speak death, amen, over your body. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. My God, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Amen. So he said, he said, he said that, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. See, this is what we do. We hear what God has said, but we do not truly believe what God said, because we don't allow doubt to come into our heart. When we start releasing our faith to believe God, the spirit of doubt comes and tells you, you don't believe that's really going to happen, do you? I don't understand why you keep saying that. You're not going to be healed. What is it? Who's talking to you? The spirit of doubt is talking to you. Why is the spirit of doubt talking to you? Because the spirit of doubt knows that at the moment you believe the word of God, that's the moment that God's going to manifest his word in your health. Oh, glory to God. Amen. So he's going to come to you. He's going to attack you with those a word of doubt. Amen. With the word of doubt, or maybe some words of doubt, because <laughs> he I never heard him say anything positive. Amen. Well, when he come against you, when he said that you're not going to be healed, and if you listen to him, that's a positive statement from his mouth that you receive in your heart. Amen. Now God wants you healed. Now it doesn't matter whether you have cancer. It doesn't matter whether you have a heart problem. You could, I mean, tell you, you could, you could, you could, you could walk around with all your arteries clogged up. But when the word of God goes in like a rotor rooter, <laughs> it goes in to get to clean up those arteries, glory to God. And before you know it, you walk in a clean bill of health. A clean bill of health. Because see, the God that we serve, he's a good God. Now notice what he said in verse number 24. Therefore I say unto you. See, everything that God is saying to us right here is about us using words. Notice again verse number 23. How many times he talked about saying something? For verily I say, number one, that whosoever shall say, number two, unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he say. That's four, that's, that's three times. He shall have whatsoever he say. That's four times in one verse that God is talking about saying something. So that's powerful, folks. If you get a, a hold of that, because see, what you say is going to make a difference in your health. What you say is going to make a difference in your body. What you say is going to make a difference in your life. Amen. Or you can walk around. You, I mean, you can even, you can even, it'll even make a difference in your, in your finances. It can even make a difference in your family, your children. Amen. It can make a difference in your job. It can make a difference in your, in your surrounding. Because what you allow to come out of your mouth is going to affect whatever you're speaking toward. It's going to affect whatever you're speaking toward. Speaking toward. Amen. If you speak it toward your family, it's going to affect your family, either in a positive way or a negative way. If you speak it toward your finances, it's going to affect your finances, whether in a positive way or a negative way. 
If you're speaking toward your, your, your business, it's going to affect your business, whether in a positive way or a negative way. Words are the most powerful thing that God has given us in this earth to operate in. And that's why we have to understand that we are spiritual beings. We have God's ability working on the inside of us. And as long as we are lining our words up with the word of God, then we're going to get the God kind of results. Amen. Because surely he bore our grief and he carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him, stricken, spirit of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. Amen. We are healed. Those words are full of life. Now let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 4. The book of Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. Are y'all still with me today? Amen. Amen. The book of Proverbs chapter 4. Now let's look at verse number 20. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse number 20. See this is one of your ingredients that you're going to have to adhere to to receive God's promise in your life. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says, My son... Attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thy heart. Note what it says in verse number 23. For they are life. What is life? What is he referring to? He's referring to his word. He said, My words are life to those that find them, and help to all their flesh. What is he referring to? He's referring to his word, folks. He said, my words are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. And that's why we should meditate upon the word of God as much as we possibly can because once, when we begin to meditate upon the word of God, we establish God's laws in our hearts. That when we begin to speak the word of God, it releases God's ability on our behalf. God's word will not lose his power just because it has been spoken once. When God said, let there be light, there was still power to create more light. All you got to do is start speaking. Amen. Just start speaking. God wants you healed. God wants you delivered. God wants you set free. But you're not going to experience that until you make up your mind. God if that's what you want, I come in agreement with your word, and I'm going to speak what you have said instead of what I think you said. Amen? God is looking for someone that's going to come in agreement with his word. Look again right here in verse number, verse, uh, Mark chapter, what's up, Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, I mean. Proverbs chapter 4. Now look again right here, verse number 20. He said, my son, that see, once you become a born again child of God, you are now what? You are now his son. So he's talking to you. Even if you are a woman or a girl, he's talking to you. Amen. Because you are a homo sapien. So he's talking to you. Amen. So he said, my son or my daughter, attend to my words. In other words, pay close attention to what I'm saying. Pay close attention to what I'm saying. That's what God is saying right here. Pay close attention to what I'm saying. Attend to my words. In other words, take heed to what you hear. Verse number, my son, attend to my words. Then it said, incline thine ear unto my saying. In other words, pay close attention to what I'm saying. Verse number 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. In other words, once you hear what I have said, don't let it depart from you. Write it down. Write it down. Make note of what I've said to you. Keep it before you at all times. Keep it before you at all times. Amen. Verse number 22. It tells us why. He said, for they are life. What is he referring to? He referred to his word. He said, for they are life to those that find them and help to all their flesh. Amen. Then he said, verse number 23. He said, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. See, as you allow that word to 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 to, to germinate in your heart. As you allow yourself to meditate upon that word, you allow that word to come alive inside your heart. Now, you, when you begin to release that word out the abundance of your heart, 
The word said, he said, it is it out, out he said, keep the heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You begin to release the issues of life after you have allowed that word to penetrate your spirit man. Now that word is beginning to issue out life into you. Amen. The word begin to issue out life to you. Glory to God. Amen. And so as we do, God begin to confirm his word. Now God is not going to confirm our theories, but God will confirm his word. God will confirm his word with sign and father. Amen. So he said, keep thy heart with all diligence out of all the issues of life. Amen. Put away, put away far from thee, far, put away from thee a forward mouth and preserve and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thy eyelids look right on and let thy, oh, no, I don't want to read that. That's not what I want right now. So I'm not going to continue on that line. Amen. But I want to take you now. We're going to go to one more scripture here. Let's go to the book of 1 Peter. The book of 1 Peter. And let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. Now y'all get anything out of this today? Because I'm telling you, today is your healing day. You can receive your healing today. Amen. Glory to God. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 24. And it says, verse number 24, who his own self bear our sins. See, not only did Jesus bear our sicknesses, but if you committed sin, he bear your sin also. Who his own self bear our sin in his own body, where? On the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes, notice what it said, we were healed. You were healed. So your healing is already manifested. You just got to believe it. You just got to believe it. And it says in chapter 3, verse number 12, it said, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ear are open to their prayers. I'm going to read that again. This is 1 Peter chapter 2, chapter 3, verse number 12. For the eye of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of of the Lord is against them that do evil. In other words, you thinking that you can do evil and think that God's going to take pleasure in you? No. But when you do right, God's going to take pleasure in you and He's going to honor you. He's going to sustain you. He's going to deliver you. And he's going to heal you regardless of what you're going through. Because see, the God that we serve, He loves you. More than you can imagine. Amen. Now, I want to take you. Can I go one more scripture? It's in my heart right now, so I'm going to have to go to it. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Because Acts chapter 19. And it says right here in verse number 11. You see here? I have these prayer cloths right here. See these little prayer cloths right here? 
Oh yeah. I have seen many miracles wrought in the hearts of God's children with these little prayer cloths. Oh hallelujah. See these little prayer cloths? Yes. Now in verse in Acts chapter 19 in verse number 11 we can see right here this mention in the word of God. This prayer call. Amen. We can see it mentioned right here in verse, in, in verse number 11 and 12. Amen. So let's read verse number 11 and 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchief and apron and the disease departed from them and the evil spirit went out of them. Amen. So today, I'm anointing these prayer cloths. I'm, I'm anointing these prayer cloths today. Amen. Now see, and I know that you listen by the internet, you wish you was here right now to get one of these prayer cloths. <laughs> You're not here to argue. But let me tell you what you can do. I want you to get you a prayer cloth right now. To get your own prayer cloth. Amen. And get you some oil. And we're going to, I'm going to pray over yours as I pray over mine. And I'm going to anoint these with oil. And you're going to anoint yours with oil. So go ahead on right now. Take your time. Run get your prayer cloth and run get your oil right now. You got a few minutes. Amen. Because see, God said in verse number 11, and God brought special miracles by the hand of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the disease departed from them and the evil spirit went out of them. See, sickness and diseases are not from God. So if they're not from God, they are coming from a different direction. Amen. Y'all understand what I'm saying? They are coming from a different direction. And so we need to understand that this is not God doing. This is the enemy doing. And God wants you healed. God wants you healed right now. And I believe that you are in the right place at the right time and you will receive your healing. See, this oil right here is from the Holy Land. It come all the way from Jerusalem. Amen. See the cross? All the way from Jerusalem. And I'm going to anoint this cloth with this oil from the Holy Land. Amen. I'm going to anoint the cross in the name of the Father. Everybody, you, you do what I'm doing now. Those you got your cross, do it with me. I'm going to anoint the in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm going to turn it on the back side and do it again because I want to go through all of the cross. So I'm going to do it again from the back side. I'm going to anoint this cross in the name of the Father because I want the Lord to go through all the cross. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Now I'm looking, and the oil went all the way through all the cloths. All the oil, all the cloths have oil. Amen. Amen. That anointed oil. Now I'm going to hold it in my right hand. You do the same. Hold it in your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, I release the operation of Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12 in this cloth right now in Jesus' name that it will drive out sickness and diseases and unclean spirits in the name of Jesus. 
Father, I release that anointing now. Oh, shaky balalabashantalabakai. And I declare, Father, that everyone that applied this in their lives right now will receive a manifold blessing in their life. I declare it, I decree it now in Jesus' name. And I give you praise and glory for it. Amen and amen. There's a healing anointing right now resting upon these cloths. There's a tangible importations that have been imparted to these cloths. Amen. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you and I bless you and I glorify you for it. Glory to God. Now, we're going to why, why this anointing is soaking in here? We're gonna go ahead on. We're gonna say this until we until it's prayer time. But right now we're gonna go ahead on and take up uh, our morning offering. Amen. We're gonna go ahead and take up our morning offering. I'm over time, so I gotta go. I gotta go this way now. Amen. Those of you that's gonna be sowing into the ministry through the internet. Those of you that are going to be sowing in the ministry through the internet, please go to my website, LarryBurgerMinistries.com, and there you can plant your seed using your ATM card, your credit card, or amen. Are you that are uh, going to be sending in through the mail system, you may uh, write down my address, that's P.O. That's Larry Burger Ministries, P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. Again, that's Larry Burger Ministries, P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 95841. As you send in your love offering, your gift of love, if you want a prayer cloth, you can request one, and I will make sure that you get one. Amen. You send in your love offering, if you want a prayer cloth, request it, and I will make sure that you get it. Amen. So, and, uh, and I believe that you'll be glad you did. Glory to God. Now, as you get your offering together, I'm going to read you a scripture. From the book of Deuteronomy. It just came up in my spirit, so I'm going to read it. Glory to God. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 said, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandment, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Bless shall be, blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field, blessed shall thou be in the body, and blessed and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep, blessed shall be thy basket, and thy store, blessed shall thou be when thou cometh in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall call thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before their face. And they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Amen. So God's blessing is available to them that will trust him. And I believe, folks, that we can trust God today. Did everybody give their offer? Did you put that offer in there like I asked you to? Okay. Amen. You got enough? Amen. Anybody else? Everybody else gave? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I hold this offer up before your Father right now. Oh, shake him out of a shondre, she mandre, she macale, la basondre. Oh, shake him out of a basondre. Father, I sense in my spirit.
that people are releasing their faith right now, Father. Oh, God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Now, Father, I declare and decree, Father, that the people that has given today in this offering, Father, Lord, that they will experience supernatural increase, supernatural financial increase in Jesus' name. Father, I come against every financial curse that is working against them, Father. For those that are tithing, Lord God, you said that you would rebuke the devour for their sake. And for those that are tipping you, Lord God, you said in your word, God, it is better to give than to receive. So, Father, we declare right now in Jesus' name that your word will not return for it, but it will accomplish those things that pleases you. We thank you, Father, for bonuses, and raises, and sellings. We thank you, Father, for our new home paid off in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for mortgages paid in full. Cars are paid off, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for out of debt, debt-free cancellation, debt cancellation, Father, in Jesus' name, because we are obeying you and we are honoring you. And Father, we thank you that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Now, folks, I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your will right now over the lives of these people as I pray for them in Jesus' name. Glory to God. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life right now, I'll give you that opportunity. Jesus, he laid down his life for your sin. He laid down his life to, for the ransom. His blood was the ransom for your sin. And he wants you to know today that you can be reconciled. If you are out of fellowship with God, if you want to rededicate your life to God, the Lord is speaking to you right now. He said, son, daughter, this is your time. This is your season. Amen. For I am the Lord God. And I'm asking you to prepare your heart because I'm coming soon. Oh, yes. I'm coming soon. And so prepare your hearts for that day is coming. And you do not want to be left behind. And I, I'm talking to you that never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. And for you to who have backed and want to rededicate your life. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, God said he's coming soon. He's coming soon. And if you're not born again, if you're not saved, you're going to be left behind. And he's talking to you, the backslider. If you are backslidden, if you're living a life in a backslidden state, you want to rededicate your life, you need to do it now because he's talking to you too. He said, I'm coming soon. Amen. I'm coming soon. And so, folks, it's your decision. You got to make a decision. It's your choice. Say this prayer with me if you want to. If you settle where you are, then that's fine with me. That's between you and God. But my job is to introduce you to the new life that's in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that's through salvation. Say this prayer with me if you, if you desire to, to rededicate your life to the Lord or you desire to give God your heart for the very first time. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin and I ask you to come into my heart, create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. Today, as I confess my sin, I ask you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Amen and amen. If you said that simple prayer right now, Jesus Christ has made his way into your heart and you have been, you have been granted a brand new start in life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We love you guys. God bless you. Amen. Now, for those of you that have special prayer requests, and for those of you that come for healing today, I want you to come now. Amen. Those of you that want, that need prayer, those of you that come for healing, amen. Those of you that want prayer today, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my daughter, and I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continually rest upon her. And God, I release my faith, God, that she will continually walk in divine health. And God, everything that the end is meant for evil, Lord God, that you will turn around for your glory. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Divine health and healing belongs to her. And so I release that in Jesus' name. Amen. Take this, honey.
Take this and you hold on to that. Don't throw it away. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for my dear sister, Lord God. I release my faith, Father, for divine help from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I curse every sickness, every disease, every virus, every germ that will try to attach itself to her body. Now, Father, I give you glory, I give you honor, and I give you praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. This healing cloth, you remember this? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release divine help and healing in Yana from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And God, I thank you, Lord God, that every fever, Father, every virus, every germ that tries to attach itself to her body has to flee now in Jesus' name. Let your healing manifest in her body. I give you glory, honor, and praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continue to rest upon Mary. Father, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I bless this young lady, Father. God, I see that you are doing a great work in her heart. You have raised her up, Lord God. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your miracle healing power resting upon her right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And what the enemy has meant for evil of God concerning her health, God, you are turning around for your glory. I declare and decree right now divine health and healing. It belongs to her. Now, Father, I give you praise and I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Now receive your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive your healing. You got it? It's yours? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I pray for my brother in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I thank you, Father, that your hand continue to rest upon him. And Father, I thank you for your healing power that's going, Father, flowing through him right now from the crown of his to the soles of his feet. Every germ, every virus, every disease, Father, they will try to interfere with his health. I rebuke it off of him right now. And I declare and decree, Jesus Christ is the healer. And God, he's walking in divine health today. From the crown of his to the soles of his feet. Receive your healing. You receive it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all come on up here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, y'all hold hands. Hold hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I pray for this family, Lord God, this husband, this wife, Father. And every germ, every virus, every sickness, every disease, Father, they have come against their help. I speak to every organ right now, Father. I speak to every organ of their bodies that the enemy have attacked. Father, today, I declare a complete turnaround in their health in Jesus' name. And what that enemy has meant for evil, Lord God, that you are turning around for your glory. Let your name be glorified from this day forth in their health and in their life and in their children. Father, I thank you and I bless them right now in Jesus' mighty name. And God, I thank you. Now, Father, I release that divine health right now. I release it right now in Jesus. And as you believe in your heart, and so shall it be according to that which you believe. So receive by faith right now, and you will see that my word will not fall to the ground, but it will accomplish those things that pleases me. Divine help is yours, so receive it now, said the Lord. Amen. Receive it now in Jesus' name. <laughs> God bless you guys. I love you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, my sister. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I pray, Father, and I release my faith in the name of Jesus for this family. And God, I thank you, Lord God, that you have cleaned up the cancer in her body. Now, Father, I'm asking you, Father, to restore her full strength, her full strength, Lord God. What the enemy is meant for evil, Lord God, you've already showed him that he was wrong for touching her. Now, Father, I'm asking you to restore her full strength now in Jesus' name. And Father, let my brother walk in divine health so he will, so he will always be available to, to encourage his wife and to help her to stay strong in you, Lord God, by faith. God, I bless them and I thank you for them. 
Now, Father, I cancel every sickness and every disease, every virus and every germ. And, Father, I release healing right now from the crown of the head to the soles of their feet. Receive it now. Receive it. There it is. Oh, shit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And, that, and, that, and today, and today, your healing, though it have long lingered, shall manifest, and you will see my glory, said the Lord. Oh, shake out of my You will see my glory, said the Lord. Have I not showed myself strong on your behalf? Have you not seen my strength and my glory? So now you will experience the greater work that I've intended to do. Because you have allowed your faith to be released, now you shall see and you shall know that I am the Lord God that healeth thee. I will heal the deep wounds that no man can see, but only you have experienced in your hearts. I will cause you to not only receive the healing for your body, I will heal your hearts. And you will see and know, and without a shadow of a doubt, you will have the peace that surpasses all understanding, for it is yours today. I declare, I decree it, so now receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So walk in divine health and know that what God has given, no man can take it from you. It's yours. Ah, it's yours. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's yours. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will rest upon your hearts and your mind. And all things which are good and pure and perfect and lovely and of a good report, you shall think on these things. Amen. Don't let the devil tell you that that cancer is coming back because he's just lying. He's lying. The devil is a liar and a father of the lies. Amen. Remember, the Lord who healed you, he will walk with you and keep you in divine health. Just trust him from this day forth. Know, just know that he is, that he is. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. On your back, I sure can. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every disc, every vertebrae right now. Oh, shake him out of side. I speak to every disc and every vertebrae right now. And I declare, Father, your healing power. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Pain, you go. You go from her back right now. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you. 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 Now, 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 now this is where you're going you're gonna to stretch those joints back. You're going to stretch those joints right now. Bend over. Can you do it? Yes, you can. You can do it. You're going to stretch those joints right now. There they go. There it is. Ah, there it is. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, all this pain, all this pain, go. You can't stay. You can't stay. There it go. There it go. Now stand up. Stand up. There it go. There it go. There it go. There it go. In Jesus' name. 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 Thank you for Father. Now, Father, I bless you. And I glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you all right now? You feel you feel better? No. no? <laughs> just 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 receive it, honey. It's, you, I receive it. But by the time you get home, you're gonna feel better. Amen. By the time you get home, you're gonna feel better. Remember, we said by two thirty. Amen. But at the beginning of the service, we said by two thirty. Amen. Glory to God. Now, Father, we just thank you that she walk away. Your healing power is manifested in her back. Yes. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You want me to pray for you, dear sister? Come on. You want to pray? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this young lady, Father. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will protect her from the germs and the viruses and the colds and the flu that are floating around in the atmosphere. I declare divine health and healing in the name of Jesus from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. 
And God, I give you praise and I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, let your kingdom come and your will be done in her life. I bless her now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Amen. And for you that are listening by the internet, you got your claws together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the anointing right now to flow into those cloths that they have gathered together in the name of Jesus. I release Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12 to work in those cloths. And Father, as they lay those cloths upon their bodies and keep them upon their bodies for the minimum of, of one week, God, they will experience that miracle working power in Jesus' name. And the peace of God, as the peace of all understanding, will rest upon your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. And I give you praise and glory. Amen and amen. Amen. So, folks, you hold on to those cloths. Try to keep them on your body for, for the rest, for, uh, until Friday. Okay? Until Friday. Because I'm going to be praying for all of you that, 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 that have been prayed for today. I'm going to be praying for you all the way through Friday, because I'm going to be fasting and praying all the way through Friday. Amen? So you keep those prayer cloths on you. Amen? I appreciate that. And, and, and expect the full manifestation of your healing. The full manifestation of your healing. Because God does not get pleasure out of seeing you sick. God gets pleasure out of seeing you walking in divine health and healing. Amen? Glory to God. Now, Father, let us all stand. We get ready to go home. Let us all stand. Father, as we prepare to go home right now, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that not only do I pray, I declare and I decree divine health and healing impartations will be received upon all of them that have a healing need in their bodies. I proclaim divine health and healing. I decree it and I declare it right now that it be received in the bodies of those that have a need of healing in Jesus' name. Now receive it by faith. And Father, we thank you that it's done. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget to join us on Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll be teaching on prayer and we ask God that you would join us. We pray to God that you would join us and be a part of our service. God bless you. We love you. This is Pastor Larry, New Life in Christ Jesus Church. Be blessed. Be healed. God bless you. Until the next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.
don't see that check. Oh, I, I put the letter in the card. I don't have a uh, check for Okay. Hey Yuri, you still riding around? Hey, Yuri. It comes off tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow it comes off. But you guys are looking really good. Look at you. <laughs> You're going to be a little naive, huh? Huh? You with me? Oh, my friend. Oh. Okay. 